This is a story of the American Civil War that you may never have heard. It's about a flashpoint that contributed to the rejection of slavery as an institution. Dr. Stephen McBride, Director of Interpretation and Archaeology at Camp Nelson Civil War Heritage Park in Nicholasville, Kentucky, shares with us the untold story of Camp Nelson. Camp Nelson was a U.S. Army supply depot and recruitment camp during the American Civil War. It's the state's largest and one of the nation's largest recruitment and training centers for African American soldiers who were referred to at that time as United States Colored Troops, and also as a refugee camp for the wives and children of these African American soldiers. Initially, this was uh, restricted to free blacks and enslaved men with their owner's permission. But in late May of 1864, a large number of men, actually about 250, uh, escaped slavery and came into Camp Nelson to join the Army without permission from their owners. And the Army finally decided, uh, let's sign them up. And ultimately, Kentucky uh, provided over 23,000 men of color into the Army, which is the second most of any state. When the African-American men came into Camp Nelson to enlist, some of their wives and children actually came with them, also looking for freedom. The Army initially didn't really know what to do with these wives and children. They didn't have a policy, uh, but they let them stay in the camp for a while in uh, makeshift encampments. And eventually, in November 1864, they uh, expelled all of the women and children who at that time were about 400. And this was a particularly cold day. And of the 400 that were here, 102 of them died of exposure and disease. And this led to a national uproar the Army changed their policy. They built what they called the Home for Colored Refugees here at Camp Nelson. And Congress passed an act on March 3rd, 1865, to emancipate the wives and children of the African-American soldiers. And this, along with the enlistment of the men, was really the beginning of the destruction of slavery in Kentucky. One of the interesting personalities related to Camp Nelson was the Reverend John G. Fee, who was a passionate abolitionist before the Civil War, uh, actually had founded Berea College, then was run out of Berea and Madison County uh, because of his abolitionist leanings. And then when he heard about the enlistment of African-American soldiers, he came down from Ohio to Camp Nelson to help out as a minister and educator, and both worked with the United States Colored Troops and then with the African-American refugee women and children here at Camp Nelson. After the end of the war, when Camp Nelson was being shut down, uh, Reverend John Fee wanted to continue the home as a community and he tried to get the American Missionary Association to purchase it, which they refused. So John G. Fee and his wife, Matilda, actually purchased about 100 acres up of the former home for colored refugees, platted the town off, and started selling lots back to the former soldiers and refugee wives and children that wanted to stay in the community, and it still exists to this day. When visitors come to Camp Nelson Civil War Heritage Park, they can visit the museum, learn indoors about our story through texts, photographs, artifacts. Then they can venture outside and walk on our five miles of interpretive trails that pass period structures, a reconstructed barracks, and a number of period fortifications, as well as other sites, and learn about the Camp Nelson's unique story. My personal favorites of the museum, some of the personal stories of the, the men and the women that escaped slavery to come here, what that was like, 
the experiences they had. So we get a really a personal view of, of what this experience meant to them, um, which is oftentimes a difficult thing uh, to find. And I, I just think our story is different from any other Civil War site, and we're very much worth the trip. This is just one of many stories that can be heard and experienced only in Kentucky.